All right, and in this session, we're gonna be talking about aerodynamics, how the wing works. So let's start out with, well, first we have to understand what high pressure and low pressure does and, and how it's even, how it was even found. So it actually started with Daniel Bernoulli. And you may have heard of Daniel, Daniel Bernoulli, but he had nothing to do with, with wings. Surprisingly, he made perfume. He figured out that if you had a bottle with liquid in here, he found out that if you were to create a low pressure right here, you can actually suck up this liquid and spray it out the direction that you're going to be trying to spray it in. So let's go ahead and make the old fashioned perfume bottles. And here's the sprayer. They got a little, a little filter right there. So, and you had a little tube that went down here. So when you spray, you're putting a lot of air going through here. So what, the faster the air flows, the less pressure you have. So if you have a less pressure, think of it like, like it's a vacuum. So you're creating a vacuum. This liquid is gonna be sucked up through this and once it hits this air, it's going to be forced out through this little, uh, through this little screen, and that's how you get perfume, all right? So that is through, that was found through Daniel Bernoulli. Now, how would, does this relate to a wing? Well, we found out that low pressure uh, is uh, it creates like a vacuum, right? So if we can find a way to have a low pressure on here and a high pressure down here, this is literally like a vacuum and the wing is actually gonna wanna go upwards, right? One thing we dip, one thing we definitely have to understand is the airplane, the wing is actually going through the air. It's the wind is not coming at the airplane, right? So we have a bunch of air molecules in the air. So we have an air molecule here and an air molecule here. It's undisturbed. However, when you got something flying right through it, it's going to move whatever and then it's gonna come right back to where it originally was. That's what it's intentionally wanting to do, right? For the air molecules. However, if, if one of these air molecules has to travel a little bit faster than the other, when the airfoil passes it, then that's what exactly what it's gonna do. And that's exactly what happens to the airfoil when the airfoil moves through these air molecules. So let's get this air molecule at the beginning of the, of the wing, and we got an air molecule here, we got an air molecule here. Now, you ever, I don't know, try to beat somebody around town or something like that, and the other guy had to go way around around town, and you just had the, the straight shot right through the town, and you didn't really have to go that fast because you didn't have to travel that far. This guy is really hauling butt because he has to Hauling butt because he has to travel a way farther distance, right? So he's gonna be traveling a little bit faster to try to meet you at the end. This is the same exact concept that's going on here. This molecule is just going at a nice straight line, right? So at the end, he's gonna be here. This guy, however, he has to travel a farther distance around. So in order to meet him here by the time the wing uh, travels through this guy's gonna have to travel faster now going back to our going back to our perfume remember the the faster the air goes the lower pressure it is right so if we have a lower pressure on the top then then the bottom well guess what we have a vacuum on top of the wing and that's essentially how our wings work and that's how they can get the lift and that's if they're just straight across like this. Now, if they are actually at an angle, now we have angle of incidence. And this is very similar to if you stick your hand out the window and you and you tilt your, your hand like this, it's gonna push it up. Well, the wings actually do that as well. In fact, so when you are, so the angle of incidence is literally how the wing is at physically attached to the aircraft. Now, if it's, it's a, if it's a flat wing, you can probably see right there that it's just, it's just flat, right? But we have an angle of incidence that's right there. And we'll actually go outside the aircraft and you'll actually see that the airplane, uh, the wing actually twist a little bit. 
I'll show you that. I'll show you why the wing twists in a bit. But you can kind of see how we have a lower pressure on the top and a higher pressure on the bottom because the air molecules are going to go faster on the top in order to meet at the end when the airfoil moves through the air. All right, I just wanted to show you. This is this app is on my iPad and it's called Wind Tunnel. And what you can do is you can see how the air molecules are going much faster on the top versus the bottom. This is exactly what's going on in the air. So as you can see, the wind is going or the air molecules going so much faster on the top causing a lower pressure and the bottom is not going anywhere as fast. The reason why is because these guys need to catch up and meet the same air molecules at the at the so they'll be the same at the um, at the end there. And that is how your wing works. Now, angle of attack is when we have a uh, when we have our cord line and a cord line is simply if you draw from the uh, from the leading edge of the wing to the trailing edge a straight line that straight line is going to be called your cord line there's another one called camber camber is exactly if you have your if you have your wing shaped let's say like this camber is so uh, again uh, our cord line is leading edge trailing edge straight line cord line now your camber is almost the same thing you're starting from your your leading edge but you're splitting the wing in half all the way down so our camber is going to be looking something like this it's going to be the same it's literally split in the wing in half that is your camber line okay so our cord line is what we can is what we need to understand when it comes to angle of attack so we have our relative wind our relative wind going this way just like in the app that you've seen now our cord line let's say this is our cord line straight line leading edge trailing edge and now we're going through so we have our angle of attack we have almost no angle of attack however once we start banking or, or pulling up like this now we have an angle of attack that is your angle of attack however this is going to be very short because it's relative wind so let's say we do have a, have an angle of attack but when the wing starts going up the wind is now going this way according to the member angle of attack is just relative to the cord line in the oncoming wind that's what that is right there now when you are traveling uh, a little bit slower your wing is going to get more and more angle of attack so what essentially happens is you have your oncoming air and let me see, i'll actually do this on here so you can see this uh, a little bit better all right so what happens is we have and this app is great by the way oh for i guarantee i hopefully you get your instructor onto this app because this is amazing anyway so as you can see right here there's very little angle of attack now as we get a little bit more angle there now look what's happening now our our center of lift used to be right here which i'll talk about here in a second center of lift that's another thing i forgot to mention so we have our wing here now there's a certain point where the air is going to move the fastest so it's going to move fast 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 and then it's going to slow down fast 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 slow down. fast 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 slow down so wherever the fastest point let's say it's right there that right there is your center of lift now what happens is when you start getting more and more angle of attack what's going to happen is this center of lift is actually going to move forward forward uh, and I'll, I'll show it to you on here uh, this is what it's going to look like so our center of lift is literally right there you can see where the it's right there and then it starts slowing down as we go back here so this is the center of lift this is the lowest point of pressure on the wing so you have a lot of vacuum right there now what tends to happen is when you get more and more angle of attack more and more angle of attack 
you there is a certain point where the air can their air molecules can no longer stick to the edge of the wing right here this is called your critical angle of attack this is where your wing stops producing lift and then you end up stalling but once i'm here look where my look where the center of lift is it's almost right in front of the wing hmm so we have like a vacuum almost in the front of the wing right there right so if you notice on the very front uh on our leading edge of the wing right about here well let me get my other airplane right about here you're gonna see a little stall horn so stall horns actually work off of vacuum low pressure so our center of lift is going to be right here right so as we start getting more angle of attack more angle of attack more angle of attack look what's happening to that center of lift it's actually moving forward and when you have a vacuum right in the right in front of your stall horn guess what your stall horn's going to sound and that is how your stall horn works all right, so we are outside in the aircraft, and as you can see, the angle of incidence, so you can see the aircraft, the aircraft, and you can see how the wing is actually already kind of at an angle right there. So that is what I meant by the angle of incidence. So if we were to look down the wing, you can see how the wing is twisted. It goes from angle of incidence from the root of the wing and it kind of goes down level as you can see right there. Look at that. It's almost level with the horizon right there. And there's a better shot right there. The wing tip right there. Also, as I mentioned, in the very front of the wing, you have your stall horn. So yes, if you can, if you exceed the critical angle of attack, the center of lift is going to go from the way to the leading edge and then that is where you're going to get your low pressure now another thing about high and low pressure high pressure always 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 wants to go toward low pressure why let's say we have a two columns of water right here we have a lot of water in this column we have a little bit of water in this column so this is going to be very heavy over here right so let me, this is very heavy, and this is very light, or high pressure, low pressure. What happens when we remove this little door here that's separating the two? Obviously, the high pressure is gonna go, in, is, is gonna go over to the low pressure and level it out. We'll kind of go back to this concept when we talk about aviation weather, because this is exactly how, how weather works as well when we talk about fronts or whatnot. But going back to this, let's just concentrate on this portion first that we have to understand that high pressure always wants to go toward low pressure. So we have a low pressure here, high pressure here. Always wants to go to low pressure, right? Now let's, so this is the side view. What we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this this way and we're going to concentrate on this figure right here. So we have high pressure and low pressure right so high pressure is always wanting to go to low pressure however we got this wing in the way right it's always wanting to go up got the wing in the way 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 hey i found you this is how we have wingtip vortices so we have this circular motion when we're flying through the air as we're flying through the air, we have high pressure, high pressure, high pressure, high pressure, hey, and we get this swirling, um, the swirling effect. Now, since we're flying through the air, it leaves these swirls behind us as we're flying through the air. And those are wingtip vortices. The bigger aircraft have big wake file wingtip vortices. We actually call them uh, wake turbulence as well. So that is something to be considered about when you're flying behind or flying close to other aircraft. All right, finishing up with aerodynamics. All right, so now that you've seen what happens when we have our angle of attack, so here's our angle of attack, or sorry, here's our wing foil right here, and we have, we understand the high pressure is gonna be down here, low pressure is gonna be up here. Wherever the air moves the fastest, eh, fast, fast, slow, slow. 
Uh, fast, fast, slow, 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 slow. Right here is gonna be your center of lift. Now, as we just mentioned, the more the angle of attack moves, that center of lift is actually gonna move forward, 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 and then when that hits that stall horn, that's gonna be close to that critical angle of attack, and then the wing is going to wanna go back down again. So now that we understand how that works, we also uh, understand the wing twist, and I'll do this again right here. Here's a really good example. So our wing, as you'd see when we went outside the airplane, is kind of like this. I know I'm kind of over-exaggerating it a little bit, but let me actually take this off so you can see. So the wing is actually up in the, in the root of the wing, but at the very ends, it's actually twisted down like this. So this part of the wing is actually going to reach its critical angle of attack first. Look at that, it's already probably at its critical angle of attack, but look at the end, the end, the wing tips. It's not there yet. It can actually still keep on going up, but that's why the wing is gonna be uh, stalling from the root of the wing first, and that's another reason. That's why the stall horn is closer to the root of the wing opposed to the end of the wing. 